Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we scour hundreds of poker vlogger hands from across YouTube and bring you 10 of the best. In this week's episode, we've got high roller tournaments, we've got hands where we just weren't expecting the outcome, and we have a brand new poker vlogger who we're featuring for the very first time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's make a start. At number 10 this week, and we get to see another winning hand from our favourite European poker vlogger, PK Poker. Philip is playing in his 2-2, that's 2 euro, 2 euro cash game in Germany. Okay, to be honest, for me this hand played itself and there was not so much skill involved on my part. Anyway, we are in the small blind with pocket fours. There's a button straddle to aid and I'm next to act and I decide only to call here and see what develops. The big blind calls as well before it falls to the low jack who makes it 30. The button straddle decides to call and I definitely call here to set mind as well and that for sure invites the big blind player as well and we see a flop four ways. Can we hit another set? I think you guys guessed it. The dealer rolls over ace queen four with two spades. Oh baby, what a feeling. Flopping bottom set in a massive pot. We are out of position and I start with a check. Unfortunately, all of my opponents behind me check as well and we see a turn. Luckily for us, it's a brick, it's the three of clubs. Now I definitely want to start to build a pot here. The only question is on how much I want to bet. After a small time, I decide to bet for 75. The big blind and the low jack fold, but we get one customer. The button decides to call. I really hope for a non-spade card on the river. And indeed we get one. The dealer rolls over the four of clubs so we hit quartz, quartz for, for the boy and now again is the question on how much I want to bet. To be honest I'm not really sure what is the best bet sizing here on the river but after some time I decide 125 seems to be good and let's see what the button wants to do. The button decides not to call not to fold, the button decides to jam all in for my remaining stack of around 385 total and yeah there is no better feeling you have the nuts on the river and your opponent raises you and of course I stick in the call and tell him I have the nuts here sorry bro. I show my hand and he immediately mugs. We hit quartz and got max paid here in this hand. Unbelievable feeling. Number nine this week, and Branson is at the Gardens Casino in Hawaiian Gardens, California. He's in a 5-5 cash game, and what a beautiful paired board on the turn. Next, I pick up pocket fours on the big blind, the under the gun limps, the plus one player makes it $50, and the cutoff calls. I can already see the line of people waiting to get on this ship, so I call to try and hit my set, and sure enough, here come the people. We have the straddle. Jealous of all the action, wanting to get in on the play. The under the gun who paid $10 for the low class ticket, but still made it on the ship. The plus one player and cutoff who got on the ship from the beginning. And me, Jack Dawson, the main character of the movie. <laughs> Looking for love. The flop comes out 3, 10, 4. We flop our set, but the board is all hearts. I don't want any more hearts coming out for free. I lead out for $175. The straddle goes all in for $320. It folds to the cutoff who goes all in for $655. Well, I'm pretty sure one or both of these players flopped a flush, but I still have over a 30% chance to hit my boat. If I die, I die, but I am not letting go. I'm all in. The turn is a three, we hit the boat, river six. The cutoff shows six, nine of hearts, the straddle mucks, and it looks like I'm not drowning today, folks. Number eight this week, and we're with Huggy at the Lodge Car Club in Austin, Texas. He's playing in a two, five game, and we're all dying to know, Huggy, what on earth is power mucking? I rebuy for another thousand dollars, and 20 minutes later, we find ourselves in an interesting hand. We've got 98 offsuit in the hijack. The under the gun player straddles to 10, it falls to us, and I make it 30. The big blind, who was the incredibly aggressive player sitting to my right in the last episode of the vlog and has been aggressive at this table as well, three bets to 130. It folds back to us, and we've got position, and I know this guy's aggressively raising a wide range, so I make a bit of a loose call. 
The flop comes down 9 jack queen with 2 diamonds, so we flop on a pair with the dumb end of a gut shot and our opponent c bets for 135. I was expecting him to see bet any flop given how aggressive he plays. Since we've hit the board, even though it's just bottom pair, I'm gonna be sticky here and I make the call. The turn brings the 10 of clubs, giving us the straight. Obviously we're behind any king, so it's a bit daunting. The aggressive guy bets a bit bigger now, making it $220. We just hit our hand though, so I'm not ready to go anywhere yet and I make the call. The river shouldn't change anything when it brings the six of spades. He bets, having us covered, making it effectively a bet of $543, and now I've got to decide if we're good or if he's bluffing. Honestly, it might be a bad move to call here, but this guy is just so stinking aggressive. I think he's going to make this move regardless of his holding, knowing how he plays, and I think there's a good chance he just wants to get us off our hand. After a few moments, I make the call, and he power mucks his hand, meaning just our pair of nines was probably good. Given that he mucked, we didn't need to show our hand, but I instinctively turned it up, which absolutely tilted our opponent and ultimately made him leave the table. Number seven, and close to broke, is playing at the Commerce in California. He's in a 5-10 cash game, and I don't know, I think we'd rather see a fold. In this next spot, the hijack decides to open up to $40. The button who is that OMC player decides to make the call. I look down at four or five of clubs here from the small blind. Pretty loose, but again, we're trying to get into a pot with this guy, and I think I can maneuver post flop in some aspects, hopefully. So I decide to make the call. The big blind calls as well, and we're going off to a flop that is really, really juicy as it comes. Ace, six, three, two spades, and a club. We flop an open ender as well as that backdoor flush draw. The action checks over to the initial raiser, who decides to see bet here for $55. The button decides to make the call, and on this situation, I'm going to go ahead and raise here. I have five highs, so taking this hand down on the flop would be unbelievably plus EV. And beyond that, I think by taking over the range of the hand, I can possibly win it on certain runouts, even if I don't improve. And if I do happen to improve, I can build the size of the pot. I end up making it $200, to which only the button makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes, the King of Hearts. Not a great turn card, but it shouldn't improve my opponent's range in a great deal. I think that my opponent can easily have some form of flush draw here, as well as a weak middling ace. So when the action's on me, I decide to do not stop the betting. I make it $325. And after a brief moment, my opponent here decides to make the call. And we're going off to a river, hoping we can bink something. I'm going to need you guys to do me a big favor. On the count of three, I'm going to need you guys to click the like button. Hopefully, we can hit one of our big outs. One, two, three. The river comes. A seven of diamonds. So uh, we make the absolute nuts here. That is a wonderful situation. And the better situation is I bluffed earlier with an overbet with a not good hand. Now we have a good hand, so we can value bet shove here. The action's on me. I decide to shove for $1,200 effective, which is my opponent's effective stack size. And he goes deep into the tank. He ends up going into the tank so long, five minutes before the floor has to come over as an opponent decides to call the clock on him. The floor staff notifies my opponent that he has one minute to act, and he pulls out the $25 chip and has it in his hand, engaged for the call. At this point, I'm praying for a call. Somehow, this would be massive for us to get back on track. We need to get this train chugging down the right direction of these railroad tracks. Unfortunately, the countdown, five, four, three, two, one. It is announced that my opponent's hand is dead. And unfortunately, we are unable to take any more money from our opponent in this spot. It is what it is. I'm happy we won the pot either way. It's just unfortunate that we couldn't get the maximum. Number six this week. And we're with Harry B playing in a 2-5 game at the Seminole down in Coconut Creek, Florida. And this is a great example of how to get paid with massive overbets. In this next hand, we have eight nine of diamonds in the hijack, one of my favorite hands to play. There's a button straddle, and the player in the low jack decides to call the $10. I think we have a pretty easy raise on our part. I make it 50, the button now makes the call, and the limper releases his card. So we're gonna be going heads up to a flop, and we each have a little bit over $1,000 in our stack. So the flop is really good with a whole lot of nothing. We still have nine high, but a pretty good nine high. The flop comes out jack seven four with two diamonds. So we have a gut shot straight draw and a flush draw. This is a board that, even though we do have a pretty good hand, it's gonna be better for him. I think starting off with a small bet is ideal. I throw out $35, and he does decide to make the call. So we're off to see a turn, which is gin. The turn is a 10 of clubs. So now we are sitting here with these stone cold nuts. We cannot lose this hand at the moment. Obviously for our exact hand, this is a really good card, but even like the dynamics of the board, this should still be a really good card because if he had a jack, he's probably not gonna fold to another bet 
and the 10 could have very well gave him two pair with a hand such as Jack 10. If he has king, queen of diamonds, hands of that nature, I don't think he's going to fold regardless. So I think a big bet now is in order. I throw out $150, almost betting the pot, and he really doesn't think for too long and does decide to make the call. So when he calls a big bet on the turn, I can narrow his range to pretty good hands such as top pair, good kicker, or some pretty insane draws such as like king, queen of diamonds, etc. So now we're off to see a river, praying that it's a brick, and luckily for us, it is a five of hearts, literally the cleanest, most ideal card in the entire deck. Still sitting here at these stone cold nuts, I am the effective stack and I have around $810 in it. So that being said, what bet sizing should I choose here? And personally, I think the bet sizing is all in for a massive over bet. So that's exactly what I do. I go all in for $810. The reason that I do like this bet is because we unblock all of the really strong hands, such as again, top pair, top kicker, maybe some two pairs. I doubt he has sets, but regardless, if he has any sort of draw that bricked out, he's not gonna call a bet. So why not just go for it all? After putting in $810, it looks like he is more inclined to call than fold, which is great news. Obviously, I am praying for a call because we cannot lose this hand. And after thinking for around two minutes, he does decide to make the call. Obviously, we're good. We table it and he goes ahead and mucks. Wow. I don't think I've ever two and a half X the pot before, but let me just say that probably won't be the last time as well. Number five this week, and Ethan Rampage Poker is playing in a $10,000 buy-in tournament at the Aria in Las Vegas. That's right, people, $10,000. With the blinds passing through, my chip stack has dwindled down to 18,000, and I pick up 10-9 of hearts in the cutoff. The plus two open to 6,000, and 10-9 suited is a fun hand to gamble with, I guess. With only six big blinds and a dream, I decide to go for the gamble. I go all in, and the player to my left immediately makes the call. So that really, really stinks. Anyways, ends up folding all the way around, and we get to see a run out. I'm up against King-10 of clubs. Once again, if is anyone surprised, I am super, super behind again. And the flop comes king 10 high. Wow, I am pretty dead here up against two pair. But when the turn comes a heart, okay, is there a chance? River, only way to win is a heart. River, another heart. How the hell do I keep continuing to win these all-ins? It's so sick. The tournament life is still alive. No idea how I keep doing it, but find another fat double up. At number four this week, Anlexo is playing in a $3,500 WPT main event at the Seminole Hard Rock down in Hollywood, Florida. And as with all of the hands that we feature, if you want to see the rest of the original content from Lexo or any of the other hands this week, click on the link in the description box below. In this hand, we are in the cutoff. Under the gun shoves all in for around 20 big blinds, and I look down at Ace King. Finally, we've been waiting for this spot all night long. I've been folding for what seems like forever. We waited and waited and got aces versus tens for a double up. And now Ace King with 10 big blinds. Under the gun is all in for a pretty big stack. So I feel like he most likely here has a pocket pair or Ace King himself. But 10 big blinds, Ace King, no way I'm folding. I rip it all in there. The button folds, small blind folds, big blind lets his cards go. We show our ace king and my opponent has pocket nine, so it is a flip. We are slightly behind here. We need to hit an ace, a king, a straight, or a flush to stay alive. The flop is jack, 10, 8, actually not too bad. We have a gut shot and two over cards until the turn is a nine, giving my opponent a set. Now we only have four outs in the deck. We can only hit a queen to make a straight and that is it. No ace or king will be good. We're all in here. It all comes down to this river card. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. I feel like it was the camera again. Yeah. <laughs> Queen on the river to make the nut straight. Oh my god, what a sick hand. The last level of day number two, and we bink 
the four outer to stay alive for the full double up. I've been all in and won some massive pots and cash games, $8,000, $10,000, $14,000 pots, but the rush of being all in for your tournament life in the main event tournament with $1 million for first place is like no other feeling out there in poker. Top three for week 15. And at number three, we are with Mariano playing in a 10-20 game at the Gardens in California. And well, we weren't expecting that. We're gonna start things off with pocket fours in the small blind. Already a sketchy situation, but here we go. Button opens to 120. I make it 500 because no gamble, no future, and he calls. Heads up to a flop of queen 10-7 with two hearts. Somewhat neutral board, but I think it's a little better for the button, so I check and he checks it back. The turn is a nine, further dissuading me from betting, so I check again and he checks it back. Now it seems he has some sort of showdown value, like a medium strength pair. So when the river comes an offsuit jack, meaning ace king is now the nuts, I think a big bet is in order. I throw out $1,500, expecting to win this hand fairly often. However, before I tell you guys what happened, I gotta admit, I kinda hate this bet looking back because if I had ace king, I would've bet on the flop, but hey, at least my opponent doesn't know that, right? Anyway, he goes in the tank for a long time before finally deciding to call. I tell him you win, but he seems reluctant to show. So I show my hand and he turns over pocket fours also. So yeah, this hand was some comedy for sure. <laughs> Number two and rampage poker. Your boy Ethan is playing at the win in Vegas. And when your two pair just never feels big enough. Why not try doing something else and experiment with a six-way, $50, no limit hold'em, one board bomb pot. Bomb potting it, we go with $300 in the middle. We're off to a flop, which comes 10 six deuce, two spades. And I look down at a premium, good looking six deuce off suit. Good enough for bottom two pair and the small blind here, first act, bets out $60. Then next to act to my right raises to 260 and now it's on to me. Wow. It's really weird here in this spot as the small blind is leading into the entire field, which seems like he has a pretty strong hand. Then when the big blind raises him, he must have an even stronger range. But with two pair here, I certainly can't fold. And now it's a question of raising or making the call. And ultimately, I think raising is a little bit of an overplay with only bottom two pair as we can lose to 10-6, 10 deuce, and some sets. Anyways, for 260, I just make the call. Action folds all the way around back to the small blind player who decides that $260 is not enough. He puts in another raise, three betting it up to 880. The big blind now folds pretty quickly and he just made a complete mess of this hand and wants to abort mission. Now it's on to me now. I'm in position now at least, and I think this is really tricky. Like I said, this is super strong for him to do this with, and I don't think he's gonna be bluffing here. The other issue is that I hold the six of spades in my hand, so this player can't even have a semi-bluff, like a pair and flush draw. So there's a lot of merit to just folding here, and especially with how the night's been going, I kinda want to do that. But I have two pair, and it seems like a sin to fold two pair on the flop so far, so... How about I just make the call and maybe fold on bad runouts? That's the plan I have in mind. I'm going to be sticky for now and call, but definitely not feeling great about it. So when I make the call, we're going to a turn heads up, which comes the four of diamonds. And on this board, that doesn't really change the board a whole lot. He continues once again, this time to $1,540. Holy crap. Today has been pretty damn horrible when it comes to cards, and I really wouldn't be surprised here if I'm beat, considering how much strength he's repping right now. In-game, you won't really believe it, but I really wanted to fold this one, but ultimately, I end up just sticking it in $1,540. I make the call with a good amount to play for behind as well. Pretty much just hoping to fade a spade and also hoping that he only has a spade draw, we're off to a river which comes the disastrous five of spades. Uh, 
four liner on the board. Flush draw gets there, and I don't think I beat a single thing. Anyways, he actually checks to me, which is a huge sigh of relief. Maybe my hand can be good here, but I'm happy to just get this to showdown. No need to bet because I don't really get called by much worse. I check this one back, and he surprisingly shows us queen 10 for just top pair. And my six deuce is going to win it, so believe it or not, did not expect to win this hand, but found one of those very small hands that I did beat as played. And wow, first hand we win in the cash game streets, and I'm happy that it's a big one. And at number one this week, we have a brand new to Suited Aces Poker vlogger, Eric Mondragon, calls himself Fish. And we just love your commentary, Eric. See what you think, guys. Now I want you fishes to pay attention to something that might sound stupid for me to say, but this set off an itch in my butt that didn't feel right. This was a $20 bet with confidence coming from a gentleman that hasn't been in too much action since I've been here. Sure, it's only been about 40 minutes, but making it $20 with no limpers when the standard pre-flop bet has been 15 bucks? Something doesn't seem right. It might be nothing, but nonetheless, we continue with our hand looking down at pocket jiggities. Brad Owen, thank you for the shout out. We're on the button and given our history with pocket jiggities, we're going to go on and just flat here and we're going to go heads up to a flop of four, five, eight with two clubs. My opponent goes on and puts out a pretty big bet of 30 bucks on a board that is beautiful for my jiggities. If my opponent has ace king or some random picture cards, then I'm not going to let him get there for cheap. So I go on and I repop them to 75 bucks. I am not even done putting in my 75 when my opponent announces that he's all in for another 205 of his hard earned moolah. I go into the tank longer than this pandemic and after adding up every red flag here, I'm just gonna have to let this one go. <laughs> Let me respect you, man. Take it. Take it. Oh, yeah, baby. Our opponent is nice enough to show us that we may tricks the bullet here as he goes on and shows us pocket kings. Nice full fish. So a huge congratulations to Eric Mondragon, not just for making it as a featured hand on Suited Aces Poker, but for making it in the number one spot. An excellent hand for your first time outing. We'll look forward to seeing many more in the weeks to come. So that's it, folks. That's all for week 15. Thank you for watching. As always, please do like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a bunch. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the very next episode of Suited Aces Poker. Until then, good luck of the felt.